grievances be today if we revisited the Declaration of Independence? And I say to you, we have more than the Founders did. Perhaps it's a more difficult time without unlimited land to expand into. Admittedly, that is so. Nonetheless, the grievances we have now are as great or greater as we had in 1776. To wit, and this will be short, and I shall document my findings. The list of grievances. Perhaps you need to see the findings first. Really? <clears throat> This is our U.S. public sector. This, all this blue stuff is basically the security state because the interest on our debt is almost entirely attributable to our focus on uh, foreign war and empire <clears throat> hurting people who may or may not deserve it. And the same with our bloated correctional system see here, the United States has two million prisoners. It's disgusting. Russia at least only has 849,000 and no other country comes close. It's pretty, uh, China's is pretty dreadful too, but they have four times our population. And here you have a indicator. This dark green is the number of prisoners in the world quarter of all the prisoners in the world are in the United States. And in terms of education, we have dropped to 28th in sciences. We have dropped to 23rd in, I'm sorry, in math, 23rd in science, and 17th in English, or that is to say reading. <clears throat> And in terms of uh, length of education, uh, staying with your education, we are 24th, substantially behind Libya and Cuba. So these are some of our grievances. This is a very abnormal prioritization. Um, normal country this sector over here would be one-third of what it is and our public health care spending due to the stranglehold of the pharmaceuticals and the insurance companies which neither really produce anything uh, compared to uh, what they extract because of the over promotion of these drugs there's Another 30 million Americans that you could say have been disenfranchised by being over-medicated uh, because there's an economic incentive to enslave the people on these things, both criminally and legally. doesn't mean we shouldn't reward innovation, but it means we should not reward predation. Half of the dollars we spend on health care are lost. <clears throat> So what is our list of grievances? Our list of grievances. We want to have the right to be represented. When you consider it costs almost a billion dollars to $300 million to run simply for the governorship of California, we have lost our right to be represented. The right to be free. We have more people in prison and felons and uh, disenfranchised, as well as another 20 million people have no recognized rights. There's 30 million people living in fear. The right to speedy trial has been taken away from us. If you're even suspected of having helped a terrorist, indefinite detention, all of our rights involving uh, police monitoring of us, which is a right to not have soldiers enter your house, have been chipped away into a massive security state that costs us $2.2 trillion a year to operate. One in every seven of our dollars is spent hurting somebody, uh, rightly or wrongly. 
the right to know what our government is doing has been taken from us. All these are rights that we have re lost. The right to know what our government is doing has been taken from us. The right not to live in unreasonable fear over your livelihood and health and children's substandard education controlled by petty-minded bureaucrats who protect the incumbents. Thomas Jefferson envisioned a quality education for every American, not 27th out of 30, but first or second or third, especially with our wealth and our continental mass and all of the legacy of carefully prepared resources our ancestors left to us that we have squandered. And most importantly, the right to say 2 plus 2 equals 4, which comes from 1984. That was the final thing when the world had turned into three great police states where people were told one thing and another thing was happening, where people lived in industrial squalor, <clears throat> watching mindless television. This all was written before television virtually even existed. And that was finally what freedom was, was the right to say 2 plus 2 equals 4 when everything else is gone. And how can you say 2 plus 2 equals 4 when we were launching drone aircraft into three different countries? Uh, the act of bombing a country is an act of war. Uh, read it on any novel. And if it isn't, and we need no morality. We can't simply have no morality. The new morality must be defined. Why we can surgically get involved in wars <clears throat> and not call them wars, not give our men and women who serve in our armed forces the moral badge that a declaration of war of Congress gives. Old, wrinkled, calculating men don't have the ethical insight or the courage to declare war on their enemies that they hurl missiles at uh, sanitarily keeping us from getting interested because our men aren't arriving back in body bags. It's a perfect form of warfare, robot warfare. It will become more and more popular if we don't learn to become an active and vigilant citizenry because you see there's no point in declaring independence as long as people are so easily willing to abdicate their rights. The right not to be spied upon, the right not to have our army intelligence service be used for domestic surveillance. For uh, all the whole Cold War, there was a firewall between foreign surveillance and domestic for surveillance. It was violated, but it was set up, and there were many who paid the price for violating it, and it was not accepted by the American public to violate it freedom of the press. With the, in the old days, a corporation had to prove that it was serving the public good periodically. Uh, it was considered a, a, a it, I don't know why exactly, but corporations, uh, a compacts of business people, to get their charter renewed had to demonstrate that they were in the public interest. Now it's quite the opposite. We have to demonstrate we're in the corporate interests. And uh, the self-censorship and the uh, uh, completely insubstantial culture has led to people uh, acting essentially as cheerleaders for an administration that feeds them narratives that they unquestionably uh, promulgate. <clears throat> so by the corporations no longer having the need to show that they have good citizenship. We have accepted the fact that they can hawk uh, wealth and uh, unrealistic concepts of sexuality and mindless celebrity worship. See, when the days of uh, civic duty or community orientation uh, existed, those things would have been discussed by people. and. By creating this kind of a culture, you also create this kind of a media. And by not defending your community industries um, and allowing the corporations to rapaciously uh, wipe out each community's local industries by making things more efficient for them, but erasing cultures with it, 
Our corporation's sense of responsibility is one of elite domination, and accordingly this has severely undermined our freedom of the press. We should have, we've lost the right to have a fair shake at it through unconscionable disparities in wealth and cronyism and collusion and insiderism in many, many corporate cases. The old Irish saying applies, behind every great fortune is a great scandal. And then countries are invaded for these same corrupt interests that should never have been allowed to prosper in the first place through their collusion and bribery and backroom deals. And we should have the right to be free of these cowardly, bully, black ops wars, which are creating permanent enemies for us all over the world every time we launch one. Arrogantly not sitting down with the people on the opposite side, and then sneering at those who do, such as Dennis Kucinich when he went to Syria, was pounced upon for making one single complimentary remark to his host. 40%, we should have the right not to have to have 40% of our money sucked out of us for a bloated, corrupt medical and warfare and correctional system. We should have the right to be free of a system that squeezed our public education down to the same level as the interest payments on our foreign wars and have allowed it to go down to the 30th, the 27th out of 30 in the world. We should be right to be free of a system which incarcerates two million or people the most in the world, where a normal amount on average internationally would be around 300,000. We lock up almost 10 times more people per capita than virtually any other nation, other than Russia and a few places like North Korea and Saudi Arabia, perhaps. We have allowed our Bill of Rights to be suspended. Any government who even proposes to do that has lost its moral authority. This should be considered the dissolution, the dissolving of our union, and that we must refound it. We have violated the notion of Jeffersonian quality education for every American. We have violated the Jeffersonian concept of the independent freeholder as a basis of society, which could easily translate today to people providing small businesses and uh, farms that can make a decent living and so forth. <clears throat> and we should be free of having this dishonor to our armed forces to uh, have them kill, and in some cases, at least in the old days, be killed uh, without legally defined hostilities. This is, uh, these wars, not a single one of them was worth dropping the blood of a single person on either side. As uh, Otto von Bismarck said, that such a uh, conflict was not worth the blood of a single Pomeranian grenadier. So we have actually more reasons to declare a revolution against Washington than our ancestors did against King George. And I have a book for you guys, if you just wait one second out of your busy days. shows that we have a, a lot more to complain about than they did when they rebelled. Good night and good luck.